In the vast northern reaches of our planet lies a land scarred by some of the most violent encounters Earth has ever endured. Canada, with its sweeping forests, crystalline lakes, and rugged shield of ancient rock, holds within its crust a hidden record of catastrophe. More than anywhere else on Earth, this nation bears the marks of deep impacts, immense collisions with cosmic wanderers that have forever reshaped the land. But why here? Why does Canada hold the greatest number of impact craters in the world? And more chillingly, could it happen again, not in some distant epoch, but within our own lifetimes? To answer that, we must first imagine a world untouched by humanity, when colossal rocks still roamed freely through the young solar system. Four billion years ago, the early Earth was a battlefield. Giant asteroids and comets, some as wide as cities, others as vast as small countries, hurtled across the void and slammed into our planet with unimaginable force. The scars of those ancient encounters are etched deep into the crust, but time, weather and tectonics have erased many. And yet, in Canada, more than anywhere else, the evidence endures. The Canadian Shield, a massive geological expanse that covers nearly half the country, is one of the oldest and hardest pieces of crust on Earth. This shield, composed of rocks more than three billion years old, is nature's archive, where mountains elsewhere have eroded into dust and oceans have drowned ancient scars. The shield has preserved its wounds, and these wounds tell a terrifying story. Take the Sudbury Basin in Ontario. At first glance, it looks like an ordinary mining region, dotted with roads and industry. But beneath it lies one of the largest impact craters on Earth, measuring more than 160 miles or 260 kilometers across. About 1.8 billion years ago, a massive object struck here, releasing an energy equal to trillions of atomic bombs. The blast vaporized rock, unleashed global wildfires, and left behind a basin so deep and wide that it still shapes the economy of the region today, because the heat of the impact concentrated valuable metals like nickel, copper, and platinum. Without this cosmic event, Sudbury might not exist as we know it, and neither would its role in fueling global industry. Travel further north, and you find the Manicouagan crater in Quebec, often called the Eye of Quebec. Today, it appears as a stunning ring-shaped lake, nearly 40 miles, or more than 70 kilometers in diameter. This was created about 214 million years ago, when a giant asteroid slammed into the Earth, the object was roughly three miles or five kilometers wide, and the force of the collision excavated a crater more than 60 miles or 100 kilometers across before erosion softened its edges. The impact is thought to have been linked to a series of extinctions that reshaped ecosystems worldwide. If you were standing anywhere near the blast, you would have been instantly obliterated and the shock waves would have circled the globe. Even today, astronauts orbiting above can clearly see the ring, a reminder visible even from space. And then there is the Clearwater Lakes, a pair of near-perfect circles in northern Quebec. For decades, scientists debated whether these twin craters were formed by a single object that split in two, or two separate strikes that coincidentally landed close together. The evidence suggests that about 290 million years ago, a binary asteroid, two objects orbiting one another, slammed into the Earth almost simultaneously, carving out matching scars, each about 20 miles or more than 30 kilometers wide. The odds of such a double strike are staggeringly low, but Canada bears witness to that rarity. Further east, along the St. Lawrence River Valley, lies the Charlevoix Crater, a depression about 30 miles or nearly 50 kilometers across. It was created about 342 million years ago by an object roughly two miles or three kilometers wide. Unlike many craters buried in wilderness, Charlevoix lies in a populated region, home today to towns, farms, and tourists. Few visitors realize that the valley they drive through was born of cosmic violence. The impact was powerful enough to alter the geological structure of the entire region creating fault lines and fractures that remain seismically active even now. When earthquakes strike Charlevoix, they echo a trauma first inflicted by the heavens. Then there is the Mistastin crater, also in Labrador. 
This scar, formed about 36 million years ago, measures 17 miles or 28 kilometers across. But its significance goes beyond its size. The impact generated such heat that parts of the rock were melted into glass. And scientists have found samples of minerals transformed by temperatures higher than those on the surface of the sun. Mistastin is sometimes called Earth's natural laboratory for understanding lunar geology because the rock types and impact features so closely resemble the moon's surface. When astronauts train for future missions, Mistastin is one of the few places on Earth that can prepare them for what they will encounter. Canada's landscape, however, holds even more scars beyond the colossal Sudbury, Manicouagan, Mistastin, Clearwater, and Charlevoix craters. Each one, though smaller in scale, tells its own story of unimaginable violence. In northern Manitoba lies Lake St. Martin, a crater formed about 225 million years ago. The impact created a depression roughly 25 kilometers or about 16 miles across. Today it appears as an unassuming lake, but beneath its waters is evidence of a blast that would have devastated life across much of what was then the supercontinent Pangaea. Shocked quartz and shatter cones, rocks literally fractured by the immense pressures of the impact, are still found there, silent witnesses to a cataclysmic event. In Saskatchewan, hidden within the remote boreal forest, lies the Carswell Crater. Created about 485 million years ago, this structure measures 39 kilometers or 24 miles across. To stand on the rim of Carswell today is to stand on the edge of a scar older than the dinosaurs, one that reminds us that the Canadian shield has endured wave after wave of destruction. The site is so significant that scientists frequently study its rocks to better understand how impacts alter the Earth's crust and the minerals within it. Travel further to Ontario and you will find the Wanapitai crater, formed about 37 million years ago. Measuring roughly 11 kilometres, or nearly 7 miles across, it is now filled by Wanapitai Lake. This relatively young crater is a reminder that impacts did not end in Earth's distant past. They are ongoing, and they will continue in the future. If an object capable of creating a crater like Wanapite were to strike today, it could wipe a major city off the map. Another remarkable structure lies in Nunavut, the Prince Albert impact crater. Though heavily eroded, this ancient scar, about 25 kilometers or 16 miles across, is estimated to be over 100 million years old. Its remote location and weathering make it less studied than Sudbury or Manicouagan, but it remains part of Canada's vast record of extraterrestrial encounters. And then there is the Slate Islands Crater in Lake Superior, Ontario. About 32 kilometers or 20 miles wide, this impact created an uplift of bedrock that today forms a small archipelago. Sailors who pass the Slate Islands often marvel at their rugged beauty, unaware that the land beneath their feet was lifted violently upward by a force equivalent to thousands of nuclear detonations. Together, these craters tell a story not of random misfortune, but of inevitability. Canada's stable crust has preserved what other places have lost, allowing us to map the history of impacts with startling clarity. The Sudbury Basin ranks as the second largest known impact structure on Earth, surpassed only by the Redifor Crater in South Africa. Manicouagan, Clearwater, Charlevoix and Mistastin all rank among the largest in terms of force and size. Collectively, they remind us that Canada has been ground zero not once, but many times. But why does Canada seem to take the brunt of these impacts? Is it truly more targeted than the rest of the world, or is it just that its geology has preserved the evidence more faithfully? The answer is both simple and unsettling. The Canadian shield is like a giant stone tablet, recording events that elsewhere have been erased. While impacts have occurred across the entire globe, erosion, tectonics and oceans have wiped many away. Canada's frozen forests, hard granite and relative geological stability have locked the evidence in place for hundreds of millions, even billions of years. Still, this does not mean Canada is safe from future strikes. In fact, its very history reminds us that impacts are not relics of a distant past. They are ongoing, inevitable and potentially imminent. 
Consider the Tunguska event in Siberia in 1908. A comet or asteroid only about 160 feet or 50 meters across exploded in the atmosphere with a force equivalent to several megatons of TNT. It flattened 80 million trees across an area larger than some of the world's biggest cities. If an object that small could unleash such devastation, imagine what a half-mile or one-kilometer-wide asteroid could do. And Canada, with its vast wilderness and relatively low population density, might seem like a safe target compared to a major city. But the truth is, the atmospheric and climatic consequences of such a strike would not stop at Canada's borders. They would ripple across the globe. In fact, Canada has had near misses in recent memory. In February of 2013, the Chelyabinsk meteor exploded over Russia with the power of nearly 500 kilotons of TNT. More than 1,000 people were injured, mostly from shattered glass, as shockwaves blew out windows. But here is the chilling part. Astronomers had not seen it coming. It slipped through undetected, reminding us just how vulnerable we truly are. If that meteor had entered the atmosphere a little differently, it could have hit a city directly. And Canada, covering almost 10 million square kilometres, is a massive target on the globe. What makes this even more unsettling is the growing realisation that Earth's atmosphere is constantly bombarded by debris. Every single day, more than 100 tonnes of dust and rock from space fall to Earth. Most of it burns harmlessly in the atmosphere, painting the skies with shooting stars. But every few thousand years, something larger arrives, something capable of catastrophic destruction. And every tens of millions of years, a true extinction-level event, like the one that wiped out the dinosaurs 66 million years ago, inevitably strikes. Could Canada be the next ground zero for such a catastrophe? Statistically, it is as likely as anywhere else because impacts do not target nations or borders. They strike wherever chance dictates. Yet Canada's history and geology remind us that if a large object were to hit land, its vast expanses are prime candidates to record the scar. Imagine for a moment what such an event would look like today. Picture a rock one mile or 1.6 kilometers across streaking through the atmosphere at more than 20,000 miles per hour, or 32,000 kilometers per hour. In less than a heartbeat, the sky ignites as the object tears through the air, compressing it into fire. The ground shakes even before the impact as shockwaves race ahead. And then, with the force of millions of nuclear bombs, it slams into the earth. A blinding flash outshines the sun, a fireball rises higher than the tallest mountains, and winds faster than hurricanes flatten everything for hundreds of miles. The crater left behind would dwarf cities, swallowing landscapes whole. The immediate destruction would be only the beginning. Dust and vaporized rock would be thrown high into the atmosphere, blocking sunlight for months or even years. Crops would fail, ecosystems would collapse, and billions of people could face famine. It would not just be Canada's catastrophe, it would be Earth's catastrophe. This is not a question of if, but when. Humanity has so far avoided a truly catastrophic impact in recorded history, but the odds are ticking against us. Scientists estimate that there are thousands of near-Earth objects more than 140 meters in diameter, large enough to destroy a region the size of a province or state. And while many have been catalogued, countless more remain unseen, lurking in the darkness of space. Canada's story is not just about the past. It is a warning for the future. Each crater, from Sudbury to Manicouagan, from Clearwater to Charlevoix, from Mistastin to a dozen more smaller scars like Lake St. Martin in Manitoba or Carswell in Saskatchewan, is a reminder that our planet is part of a cosmic shooting gallery. And just as the dinosaurs once discovered, survival depends not on strength, but on preparation. Across the globe, astronomers are scanning the skies, mapping near-Earth objects, and preparing defense strategies. Concepts like deflecting asteroids with spacecraft, nudging them off course with kinetic impactors, or even using nuclear devices as a last resort are no longer science fiction. They are plans in development because the alternative is unthinkable. And yet, as we look at Canada's ancient scars, it becomes clear that no amount of technology can guarantee safety forever. Impacts are woven into the very history of our planet. 
They have shaped continents, changed climates, and even steered the course of evolution. Without them, the rise of mammals and eventually humans might never have happened. But that same cosmic randomness could one day erase us, just as easily as it once cleared the way for us. So why Canada? Why does this nation hold more craters than anywhere else? It is not because it was singled out by fate, but because it is a canvas that remembers. Its rocks are old, its surface stable, and its wilderness vast. Where other places have forgotten, Canada remembers. And in that memory lies a story of fire and stone, of cosmic violence and fragile survival. The question is not whether another deep impact will come. The question is when and where. And as history shows, Canada has been ground zero before. The next time could be anywhere, but if it happens again here, the scars will once more endure, etched into the shield for millions of years to come. As we look up at the night sky, watching meteors streak across the darkness, we are reminded of our place in the universe, not as masters of fate, but as passengers on a fragile world spinning through a cosmic shooting gallery. The craters of Canada whisper to us from the past, warning that the future may hold another fiery visitor. The only question is whether we will be ready when it comes. If this deep dive into Canada's colossal impact scars opened your eyes to the raw power written in stone, don't let the story stop here. Smash that like button, share this with fellow science seekers, and hit subscribe so you never miss the next journey into Earth's hidden history. And don't forget to tap that hype icon. Every push helps launch this video into a wider audience, fueling more minds with the wonder of geology and the epic forces that shape our world.